going to demo a fishing drone here. This is something that just came to me last week, uh, and I got pretty excited about it because I'm from Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, home of some of the world's best surf fishing and offshore fishing. Right out of Hatteras Village, you can get charters. Uh, all kinds of boats are down there at Odin's Dock and Hatteras Marina. But this one is going to be something that you can use right off the beach. You can run your line out as far as you have line. You probably don't have line as, as far as this one will fly out and drop your hook. Uh, it also has a quick release mechanism on the bottom. Easy to put the props on. You see this little arrow right here. You have one on each arm. And this one's going in the counterclockwise direction. So that tells me that this one goes on clockwise. I just put it right over top of the motor and I wait till it's level and I spin the prop clockwise and it comes to a stop, just gently tug on it just a little bit, put a little bit of pressure on there, and now you're good to go. Because while the prop is spinning in this counterclockwise direction, it's actually tightening it on the motor threading. And not only do we have huge motors and 13 inch props on here, we also have 40 amp ESCs on each arm uh, for powering these motors. And just underneath the GPS canopy inside here, you have a NASA version two, and it's all updated to the latest and greatest flight software from DJI. You also have a 10 channel receiver located just in front of the NASA version two. And like I was saying before, this drone flies about a mile away, so that's about 1,500 meters. That's pretty far out there to go uh, and look around for fish while you're in the air. And on the very top of this canopy, you can see these pressure release valves right here. This just lets some airflow go through, and it's a one-way valve, so you're not going to get water back inside the drone. Now what's special about this camera versus the DJI Phantom to me is the fact that this is running real-time 5.8 video back to your monitor right on your radio. You don't have to worry about your smartphone being compatible with this camera or your tablet. You don't have to email us and ask us how can it hook up or what software do I need. You don't need any software or any computer to get this running. All you do is plug in the battery and it automatically sends that signal back to your monitor that's right on your radio uh, included with the Poseidon. So I think that's the biggest benefit of this. The second biggest benefit is the fact that since this is not a Wi-Fi camera, this is going to have a better, higher frame rate and more real-time look at the water. If you're trying to see waves going by and you're trying to see things over the ocean in real time, this is going to be your best bet. Another big benefit of this camera is that it is housed inside this metal housing. This is not the actual camera itself. This is just the metal enclosure that the FPV camera is sitting inside. There's also a piece of glass right here which you can wipe off periodically, maybe put a little bit of Rain-X on that to keep some of the water and moisture off your real-time view. And this camera's resolution is 700 TVL, so a pretty nice real-time view coming back to your monitor. Now another benefit for this application is there's no moving parts under here, no motors to keep clean, uh, keep the salt water off of. This camera is also tiltable, so if you hold on to it, you can shoot straight ahead just like this, or you can push it down all the way down to a satellite type of shot. So if you want to fly over the water and look directly down at the water, you have that option with this drone as well. Now I'm giving you guys a little bird's eye view of this release mechanism and this pin system we have right here. All it is is a servo right here with this aluminum arm and this little pin that runs through this U-hook right here. You can get a pretty large size hook or anything up inside there. Uh, it is about a half inch inside there and it will carry up to 2.6 pounds for your payload on the bottom of this quad. It's, it's pretty industrial. It's, it's a pretty big sinker you can lift. Just about any size sinker you want to take out over the surf, you can. Uh, some of the biggest sinkers I've seen people use are like a 12 ounce sinker and it will absolutely carry a 12 ounce sinker. Now even though the Poseidon is pretty large, the props do come off and the landing gear are also removable for transport. Now you guys are looking at the transmitter that comes along with it. It's set up in mode two, so you have throttle right here, up, down, and you have yaw left and yaw right. Uh, over here you have roll axis and you have pitch forward and backwards, so uh, forward and backwards flight. Now if the drone's facing you from the rear, this is gonna be left, this is gonna be right. When the drone is facing you, right is gonna be left and left is gonna be right. So keep that in mind when you go to fly this uh, or any type of drone, that things get turned around backwards. So that takes some practice, but with GPS lock, it's not such a big deal because when you let go of the stick, the drone is actually gonna hold its space 
in the air and its altitude. Now you're looking at the top of the transmitter here and the different switches, they do not come labeled. So you can use this video as sort of a, a guide to how to label your switches. They're gonna be set up the same on your Poseidon. So the furthest one over to the left, this is my mode switch and I have it labeled here for GPS, Addy and return to home. So the very top position is gonna be GPS. Middle of the position is going to be Addy, which is no GPS. Your, your drone is kind of gonna move with like it's sliding on ice backwards and forwards, uh, but it's still gonna have altitude hold. And RTH at the very bottom is return to home. So if everything goes wrong, just switch it down to return to home and the drone should fly back and land itself on the ground. Uh, the next switch over to the right is IOC, but you don't have to use this. This is all the way off at the top position. In the middle is course lock, at the very bottom is home lock. And I suggest reading up on these different modes as well. Uh, these are advanced modes. Now the one for the far right, this is drop switch. This is for your release mechanism to release your hook off the drone. Very top position is locked, so the pin's gonna be through the mechanism. All the way down is gonna let the servo. Pretty happy about the way it performed. It performed way better than I was expecting. I thought that it might be acting a little bit erratic or kind of acting funny, or maybe just not fly that good, but it was really, really fast out over the water and in front of me. I mean, this thing probably does 40 miles an hour easy on a forward tilt uh, in GPS mode or Addy mode. Either way you fly it, it's, it's definitely gonna be a fast drone uh, if you want it to be. Or you can let go of the sticks and it'll come to a solid hover just like this and hold its position and altitude. And that's pretty important uh, for certain situations. Now with no prop guards, obviously, with carbon fiber props, you wanna be sure there's no dogs or animals around when you're coming in to land this, because um, it can be pretty nasty for an animal or if it hits somebody. So be extra careful with this one. It's a pretty big drone, but it does the job that it's set out to do, uh, it is supposed to do. The quick release mechanism works perfect. 